Hey Chicas, it's Veronica Torres with the Hey Chica Movement here with another conversation. It's so amazing to have men in our room and our presence. And every time I can invite a brother, one of our fellow Latinos to the table to have conversations on different topics that are important to us. Um, and how they can support us, but also for our mamitas out there that have little young men, they're raising boys, brothers, um, cousins, primos, whatever you have. This is going to be a great conversation um, with an expert that I have with me and a friend to our community. Some of you may know him in Dallas or may have seen him or actually even heard him speak. But he's a powerhouse and he speaks on education, which is super important for us. I know for me, it was a game changer in my life and we want to have a cool, fun conversation. So with you today, I have with me and with you watching Jose Luis Delaya. He's a consultant in education, but has done a lot of project work with some of the organizations that we all know and love. Me personally, the Latino Leadership Center for Leadership that Jorge Baldot started a while back. Some of you are familiar but nonetheless, it's all about education and speaking about that. Jose Luis, how are you? I'm excited. Happy to be here. Oh, my God. I got to watch the video of you speaking at the Alpha Conference. And I was telling Margie, your story is incredible. So you're from Honduras? Yeah. How yeah. long have you been in the States? I got here in year 2000. So about 21, 21, 22 years. Wow. So what brought you here and why education? Uh, well, what brought me here was um, was the idea of reunifying with my mother, but also the desperation of being back back home and, and everything that we were living. But um, I think that what brought me here is what continues to bring people here: the the idea of a new life, the idea of hope, the idea of um, of, of of succeeding. And, and I think that that was my um, that was my reason as to why come and education created an opportunity for that dream to turn into an actual reality so it was it was it was beautiful it was beautiful to meet those two yeah and and education such a powerful topic to talk about especially for us as latinos as margie mentioned to me um hey you need to read about this guy you need to see his story and as you were speaking about the power of education i really started to think about my own story i am the first generation college bound you know um, my dad called us Chicanos, and my grandmother called us Mexicanos. So I have a long lineage of fourth generation Mexican descent in which no one had ever gone to even graduate high school. I'm sure that's the same story for you coming from Honduras. Like education probably was not number one on the list of things to do, right? I want you to kind of dig into that. Like now that you're here, you're consulting on it. What are you finding and where are the opportunities for us to engage um, in the conversation? I think that was key uh, from my personal perspective is that because of my personal background, it allows me to have a point of reference, a point of reference that is oftentimes missed um, and because we're so critical about mm -hmm. our systems and we want things to be better. But whenever you come from a place where, um, where, where institutions, where systems are not even operating or working, where teachers are boycotting, where water or drinkable water is not accessible, you tend to appreciate things like uh, water. You tend to appreciate things like electricity and, and a teacher. So I think that for a lot of English learners, for newcomers, education does become a transformative experience whenever they are in a U.S. classroom for the first time ever and I think that that's what happened to me I completely fell in love with a safe space with a teacher that that was there with the place where there were lights and classrooms and there was there was a structure and systems so I think that to me it is 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 very uh, painful and inspiring it's painful because I know a difficult reality but it's inspiring because I know that education can change that reality Right. So you were actually the kid in the classroom that was like in awe and inspired to be there. Right. Like so grateful. I um, mean, it's so different to hear that because my story was completely different. Right. I was like, oh, my God, I'm in class. I hate it. And you're right. It's because we're here. We're born here. Our, we sort of um, have this privilege of having education as a normal thing that we do as young adults. Right. And we go to school and we just do that. How do we give that message or remind our uh, us as Latinos that it is a privilege to go to school? It is a privilege to sit in a classroom with running water with like, how do we go back and take our, you know, our people back to the story to remind them 
of the opportunity, but also the value and the integrity behind what is being taught. That's beautiful. That's beautiful because I think that oftentimes what I try to tell my community and our community is that I'm not an example. I'm, I'm not an example at all. But instead, I'm a sample. Mm-hmm. I'm a sample of the oh, potential I love of the community. That. I'm going to have to write that down. And when, we, and when we think about it from that perspective, then, then all of a sudden it's, it's systems in place that got me to where I am. And, and oftentimes, even our communities are not integrated into the college application process. Mm-hmm. What we're told is they don't know. They don't care. They're not involved. But whenever we think about their sacrifices as the foundation of the education process, whenever we think about their dreams and their aspirations as to why they migrated here and why they're even busting their bags in like cocinas or restaurants mm-hmm. or flea markets, that's part of the higher education process. Right. So it's key for us to begin to recreate a narrative to where education has always been a value for our communities. Oftentimes, our communities never had the privilege of education. That's why they work so hard to be able to provide the opportunity so that we can be educated. So I think that it's important for parents to understand those sacrifices and the power of them, and then for students and children to honor those sacrifices through education. Right. So how do we, I, I have to tell you, Chicas, the, the, what he just said, not an example, being a sample is so powerful. And I hope that that resonates with our Chicas because it's, it's actually has my mind thinking, right? Like to even have that sort of um, programming set in yourself, knowing that you are a sample of the good that kind of bubbles up to the top, right? The cream on the top. But you're talking to also reminding kids or telling kids well at hey chica with our movement we actually go into high schools and we start at the high school level and we talk to latinas we talk to these young girls and ask them what are they struggling with how can we help them what is the conversation that needs to be had and a lot of them first first generation second generation are having these same conversations you and i are having my parents work so hard i want to make them proud Mm -hmm. i i just want to i just want to make sure that what they do is not in vain but there's a barrier, right? Because they can't go back and speak to their parents about the struggles of school, right? Like me, fourth generation, there's a huge gap between struggles. Like I go into school and I argue with the school system, the curriculum. Like we're reading about how, you know, the U.S. is not, you know, for me. So you have so many different dynamics that are going on in school right now. How do you or what do you think is a solution for young Latinos in high school to have change the game and change the narrative. What? How do you go about sharing that as you do consulting for education? I think I think it's important for um, for 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 our communities to um, to really comprehend that education is for for us. Oftentimes we've been told it's not for you. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes we've been pushed out and said that we don't belong. But we live in a state where even dreamers have access to institutions of higher education. We live in places where there are scholarships and resources for our communities. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we have been to 